Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Spielkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, how does the gut relate to depression? And this to me is a really important question because the gut has been implicated in many disorders from pure gut disease like IBS and IBD, whether it's uh, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's, celiac disease, to autoimmune diseases, to type 2 diabetes, to metabolic syndrome. So there are many considerations that we need to look into with the gut. And with the gut, we don't just have our, our gut lining. We have these bacteria and viruses, this microbiome that covers it. The gut microbiome is more extensive than any other part or any other microbiome in our body. We have an oral microbiome, we have a microbiome on our skin, but the gut is, is very special and that's because we're constantly putting a lot of food into it and those food particles have toxins, have fiber, have different things that we need to feed that gut microbiome, but then they can actually help control our immune system around it as well. Most of our gut microbiome is in the colon, um, but that is going to be where a lot of that fibrous material and also um, how it can control a lot of um, a lot of immune processes as well in that colon. Plus, as we've talked about many times, is that the brain and gut are highly connected. And so the brain and gut are highly connected through the vagus nerve. And so the vagus nerve gets signals from the gut which is actually most of what's happening, but it also sends signals to the gut um, for better motility, better absorption, and to control the immune system. And so how the brain is gonna get signals not only from the gut through the vagus nerve um, and through the blood, um, but it also gets information from the microbiome through the vagus nerve and through the blood. So we're gonna talk about a paper about how depression can be related to the gut microbiome axis and how we can maybe use things in the um, gut microbiome access realm, whether that be vagus nerve stimulation or probiotics or other um, microbial support to help with depression symptoms. So <clears throat> let's get to the paper. Um, it is Brain Gut Microbiota Access in Depression, Historical Overview and Future Directions. It is from Brain Research Bulletin from 2022. And in the abstract, it basically goes through just a little bit of an introduction on it's being the most common or depression is the most common mental health disorder uh, and leading cause of disability worldwide. There are many studies that showing the gut microbiome can be involved in the pathophysiology of depression and that vagus nerve influences depression through the brain gut microbiota axis. Um, in the introduction, it just goes into a little bit more of the statistics. So like 280 million people of all ages, 5% of all adults are affected by depression. Pre prevalence of depression and anxiety has, has went up in the past few years with the COVID-19 pandemic. And a lot of times there is treatment resistant depression or delayed onset of this first line antidepressant therapies um, that lead to worsening outcomes of uh, people with depression because then they don't respond well to psychotherapy and to other types of therapies. Um, so again, over the last decade, there's accumulating evidence suggesting how the brain-gut microbiota access could be responsible for the pathophysiology of depression. And before we get to this figure, I want to just mention also metabolic disturbance has been increasingly characterized in patients with depression. So metabolic disturbance, people with metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, uh, metabolic disturbance is generally a problem with the mitochondria and how they can control um, how they can control or make energy for cells. And if cells, especially brain cells, are not working efficiently, then that can result in problems uh, with the brain not being able to work or send signals properly and therefore lead to depressive symptoms. So this first picture kind of separates it out into the CNS or the brain, the periphery, which is in this case mostly the blood and circulation, but also um, neural signals or nerves. And then up here, over here then is the gut on the right hand side. And so the CNS is protected by the blood brain barrier, which are these cells here. 
Blood and Barrier only allows a good amount or proper amount of um, ions and chemical signals and proteins to enter. And then the periphery is going to contain, again, in circulation, so in the blood, chemical signals, immune signals, and then you have neural signals that go through nerves. And then in the gut, we have tons of bacteria, viruses, uh, different metabolites these bacteria and viruses make, whether they're good metabolites for us or they're bad metabolites for us. And the gut is separated from the blood through this um, epithelial layer. And this epithelial layer is only one cell thick, um, but they have these little connections that help with absorption. And then it only allows certain things to pass when necessary. And so we have things like short chain fatty acids, which actually feed our gut lining. Um, they connect to signals, amino acids connect to signals. Lipopolysaccharides are an endotoxin that would be bad acting as a signal. Serotonin or 5-HT is another possible signal, whether that's for the brain, serotonin's our happy hormone, but also serotonin's very highly uh, recognized in the gut for the enteric nervous system or the gut nervous system. Um, and then we have, and so these all metabolites, dopamine, serotonin, like polysaccharides, uh, tryptophan, TMAO, can all be chemical signals that can go and get into the brain, especially if the blood-brain barrier becomes leaky, because if there is a damage to the, to the gut lining due to poor microbiome, dysbiosis, there can be damage to the blood-brain barrier. And then immune signals. So the gut has a very extensive immune system as well because it has to correlate or it has to, um, the best word for it is to corral all these different uh, microbes, whether they're good or bad, and use the ones necessary to kind of hold off the bad ones. And so immune cells or immune signals from the gut which lead to immune cells being increased. Immune cells are like B cells, T cells, uh, but then you have cytokines, which are these signals from the immune cells that can promote inflammation. So these four all promote inflammation. And promoting inflammation can promote blood-brain barrier permeability um, and therefore cause CNS inflammation, decrease in making of new neurons, and more neuronal death. Um, and then neural signals, so through the vagus nerve and other nerves like the sympathetic nerve, spinal nerves, we have an afferent nerve. I'm sorry that these are different colors. Um, the afferent nerve goes from the gut to the brain, while the efferent aspect goes from the brain to the gut, and therefore the brain gets signals from the gut to tell it what's going on, but then is able to control the immune system, control motility, uh, absorption, and all those other things through that vagus nerve. So if we go down to the next picture, this is a very similar depiction, but just a little differently. We have on the left hand side, a uh, quote unquote normal individual without depression, without symptoms versus one on the right, more a situation where that person is gonna have depression. And so the normal individual, we have good blood-brain barrier integrity, okay? It only allows certain things passed. We have a normal gut microbiome. And the normal gut microbiome allows for proper neurotransmission of, of neurotransmitters, uh, proper immune regulation, proper connection with the vagus nerve and sympathetic nerves um, to, the, to the brain from the gut and also back to the gut. Um, proper host stress, so just a little bit of stress, but not a ton. Uh, good, gut, good gut hormones and regulation by short chain fatty acids and other chemicals, other molecules. On the other hand, if we have an unhealthy lifestyle like a poor diet with a lot of processed food, um, a lot of linoleic acid or processed oils, processed carbs, sugars, um, that can mess up our gut microbiome. Stress can mess up our gut microbiome. Infections can cause too many viruses or bacteria in the gut and again, mess up the gut microbiome. And then of course, antibiotics kill a lot of our gut microbiome and then as they try to um, repopulate a lot of times some bad bugs if we're not doing the right things with our diet bad bugs can overpopulate versus the good ones um, and then we have this dysbiosis and dysbiosis can lead to all the opposite things immune dysregulation poor signaling between the vagus and sympathetic nerves 
unbalanced stress and gut hormones, metabolic dysregulation, which all lead to this blood-brain barrier leak and leading to neuroinflammation, causing depression. The theory is that if we introduce better gut bugs with probiotics or fecal microbiome transport, um, a healthy diet, different psychobiotics and other medications, this could then improve depression symptoms, return the gut microbiome to normal, which then improves um, symptoms overall and helps people live a more normal life. And so what we are doing here, right, is what's important is besides just maybe using probiotics here and there, um, do we need to kill a gut uh, microbe? Do we need to activate the vagus nerve because the vagus signaling is not working as well? Uh, do we need to decrease inflammation with certain supplements with a better healthy um, lifestyle and diet? Do we need to reduce stress? There are many things that are involved. And so we here are going to look at a vast majority of things when it comes to looking at brain health and how your depression could be related to your brain or it could be related to your gut or both. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think this is a really important topic because depression and mental health disorders are growing worldwide. And so um, I hope you can share it and send it to somebody else um, who may be in the need. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions or future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.